media? Do you all make a wear this? You want some? You just you Please. just sit down. That's fine. Oh, Thank you. Good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. I didn't have a yeah. Good morning. Welcome to the special office for board meeting. It is Wednesday, March the 9th, 2016. Just a little bit after 10 o'clock in the district court. And number one on our agenda is to action is requested on agreement regarding sheriff's office deficit.
law enforcement, the safety and security of the people of Bullitt County is to me as the judge executive. As I have sat here for nine years as judge executive, the safety, the security of Bullitt County is of, of utmost importance to me. It is imperative that we have law enforcement. It is imperative that the people of Bullock County feel and actually are safe and sound. I've been here my entire life. My mother has been here her entire life for 83 years, 83 years. Not one time has she felt unsafe. I admire all of our law enforcement folks, whether they be on the street in a uniform with a badge, or whether they are staff working in an office to ensure that those folks have what they need to do their job. Most of us, most of us in this room know how important staff is. And they are critical. Our first responders, all of our first responders, paramedics, EMTs, are absolutely essential in any community. Thus, our community is great because of our first responders. Deep down in my heart, again, I thank all of our law enforcement, I thank our paramedics, our EMPs, our 911 dispatchers, I thank everyone who puts their lives on the line daily to protect the people of Bullock County so that we can live our lives the way our founding fathers want us to. We have a motion on the floor for this fiscal court to pay the deficit that was amassed. I want to thank our deputy judge. She and I were very close together, Lisa Craddock. She has done a phenomenal job in this situation. And I want to thank the new governor of Kentucky. Matt Bennett for working with me and those of us in county government directly on this situation. And I want to thank Marla French for going with us to Frankfurt several weeks ago and standing up for what she believes in and for speaking the words, the truth, even though the truth sometimes hurts. But she spoke the truth, and she was willing to, she went with us. She was willing to help us out. Thank you, Mother. So with that said, and I'm not, I, I can't, I, I had to say this too. I want to thank Keith Griffey, our CFO, for working so hard on this issue, and Joe Laswell. The four of us, along with Myrtle, have worked extremely hard on this situation because we know how important it is to have safety in Bullock County. And I want to say, too, all of the sheriffs, or all of the cities who have law enforcement, I thank those cities for continuing to put aside any issues that may arise in their minds and they go out there and they fight for our freedom and protect us. They put their lives on the line every day. So all law, all law enforcement need to be thanked. But this is our third meeting concerning this issue. This morning when I was getting ready, I thought, well, third time's a charm. Hopefully it will be resolved.
saw at the third meeting, this is the second special fiscal court meeting I have called. And hopefully today, this issue before Bullet Canyons will be solved with their tax dollars. So it's your money. A motion is on the floor. I am hearing no second from anybody else. So I will make a second to the motion. Are there any questions or discussion on the motion? Let me say this to everybody. I have the most respect for all of our wonderful money just in the way shape or fashion. But the beginning of last year, we increased the budget budget for $100,000. This year we increased, we kept that $300,000 in there. We added another $300,000. Then we added another $250,000. That's the grand total of $250,000. What I would love to see is the sheriff take the $250,000 additional with the $300,000 and make these payments. If he gets into trouble with that, I have no problem with coming back to this fiscal court again. Uh, if we need to get in discussion and he shows us his financial situations and this time this cannot be made, no way, shape, or fashion. But I'd love to see him to do that. And that's the reason that I would vote against this because <coughs> I want him to take the responsibility with the additional money that we have given him to pay this debt. We've got people out here right now that we cut the animal service $300,000 last year. We need approximately $3 million right now for our county <coughs> road department with the $2 million for the asphalt that we need. We need approximately $1 million for equipment that we need. That's a total of $3 million. That's just in that one department right there. I don't know where we're going to get all this money. I really don't. But uh, just another thing that I'm going to do later on, not in this meeting, I'm going to ask the county and everything to consider every one of our employees. We looked at one, I looked at one of the pay scales of one of our employees. 34 cents average over the last 11 years of all the raises they got. Now that's a fifth. Now I'm going to ask the court and everything later on and everything, if it goes in the budget, I would love to see one of our employees get a dollar an hour raise because it's, it's disgraceful the way we have paid these people. And I'd love to see that included in the budget this coming year. And that's basically all I got to say about things. So uh, I don't have a faint world against the sheriff's department. No way should form a patient. I have the most utter respect for them everything. But I'd love to see them take that additional money that we have given and do that, make these payments. And if they need additional help or whatever, they tell us where there is a need. Uh, I would, I'd be willing to sit down with them every day because they confess this if need arises. So, thank you. Thank you, Magistrate Mitchell. And, uh, our county employees certainly deserve a raise. They deserve a raise for a long, long time. They deserve more salary than they have been made for a long, long time. So I hope that this report does proceed with increasing the employee salaries. Any other questions or discussion yes, on this board? I'm sorry, this motion. Yes, I just wanted to make a thing very really, angry. Really, uh, Magistrate Mitchell said this is. By far, we have the best sheriff's department. But I was looking, you know, you start looking at things, you know, there's a lot of statements made at the last meeting. You know, the deputies ain't had a raise in five years. We don't have the best. You know, I, I looked at the audit from 2015, and the deputy salaries were $1.5 million. And it increased over $250,000 every year. Now the deputy salaries are $200,000 are two million seven. So I'm pretty sure the deputies have got the raise in three years or over five years or that money wherever it is, but the salary on the budget has raised. Uh, and then again, the, you know, with the uh, best, I looked in, in 2012 and 13, the Sheriff's Department got a matching grant for $7,800 for best. It was in the audit. So that means almost $16,000 because matching that there was money towards bulletproof vests. So I mean, that's just that looking 
back through that. But the process again is, is we're, you know, since I've been here, you know, in 14 months, we've given the Sheriff's Department to over $550,000. And it's again and again and again. And I, and I, I just, I'm the same way. I'm, you know, whatever happens here today, you know, Bullitt County deserves a lot better than what we got. Social media is nuts. You know, everybody gets on social media and, you know, we look like a laughing stock. To anybody you can go out and look, everybody laughs at Bullitt County. And it's not the cities, it's not the county. But Bullitt County deserves better than this. I hope if you've got a problem with whatever happens here today, you don't get on social media and start flirting out. Just self-hate. Think about our county. Think about the professionalism that the oath that we've taken and what you've taken to do to be a professional. No matter what happens here today, be a professional. And that's all I've got to say. Judge, I may respond to your other comments. Number one, I appreciate your comments as far as that is. Uh, Mike, would you have a motion on the floor so we could get the it will, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sir. But it, just the only thing not in the I appreciate both of them mentioning how uh, excellent our deputies have done for we'll taking care of Boyle County. <clears throat> the mention about this, I, we addressed at the last meeting, and I'll address again real quick uh, regarding the motion because, again, I think it helps to uh, <coughs> point out whether or not they should vote for this. The vests are paid for, and again, they are fitted. They have to come out and fit each person individually. That's a direct result of the pay. And looking at our budget, the reason that we already addressed that too, the reason one of the reasons the pay increased on the overall pay is because we increased numbers of deputies, and that's how we got our crime rate from 396 burglaries in 2010 to 120 for 2013 and 2014. That doesn't come for having 15 deputies out of working street. That comes for having 23 deputies out of patrolling street. Uh, the best are the direct result of the pay. With the pay, has not increased. You, no one's come to our office. You're looking at audits. You're not looking at come over and look at numbers. Come over and see our numbers. I invited. I know that I had to had, had made it clear that you all are all invited to come speak to me. I have a lot of numbers, and we're going to go over any numbers with you all any time. Our office is open eight to four, Monday through Friday, from six o'clock on Thursday. I'm glad to be with you any time to go over and prove all this. This is proof. I'm guessing these are true numbers. Um, the pay is not increased. The reason the best are not still adequate because we have turnover here. When you can go to Shepherd, you'll make five dollars more on the hour on average. My position pays about six dollars more on average. So looking at pay and looking at other things, that's the reason that our best don't work is because you can't take a guy who's six foot six and give him a someone that wore a vest who's five foot five. It's just not gonna work. It does not cover it and not protect it. Anytime we get a new employee, we need to buy a new vest. When we have a major turnover as we have because of lack of pay, that's the problem. And the only last thing is, and, and I hope Master Mitchell and it's already, I know we've already looked into this, but mentioning $850,000 like this is a large number, as this court already found out in the last 80 days, 80 plus days, it would cost almost $3.7 million a year to run a county police force of a similar size. This is $850,000 a year. I, I'll openly tell you, I told Davey's crazy when I asked you $250,000 last year. I told him I asked for $2 million. The reason why you'd still be paying less than a county police force and you still have a great men and women that work for our agency. The people that are here that are doing a good job for our agency do it because they love Bull County, not because of the pay. Believe me, they have had other opportunities to be able to make more money two miles away. So, um, unfortunately, those things you say are flawed, and I can prove them. I'm not guessing, I'm not looking at numbers. These are true numbers. Come to my office. I urge you all to vote five to zero for this. This is for the public safety of Bull County as a judge of state. This is not for Dave Greenwell. <clears throat> There's a personal problem with Dave Greenwell. So we get two years and nine months, he's gone. Don't have to worry about him again. Uh, I love that Chip Myers time, and I'm probably going at the same time too. So, because I love policing, and I love our county, but I'm done with it because of stuff like this here. This needs to be a 5 0 vote. This is a simple, <coughs> simple, simple vote. $3.7 million to provide a county police force for $850,000 to take care of our citizens and our people and take that agency. So I search all the little five to zero, which means no no brand book. Captain Murdoch, thank you. And you said a few things in there that I want our CFO to simply state because
because the costs are astronomical. So, Mr. Mr. Griffin, would you state the costs on? Yeah, my, my job as CFO is not to say who's right or wrong. Sure. Uh, and, and I would thank each one of the members of the court for taking such a long time. I think it's a, it's a good, good process, whether you're for it or against it. My job is just to state what the numbers are. And you all have seen, uh, for us to continue policing on the level that we're policing, the most cost-effective way to do that is to, is to, and I'm going to call it what it is, it's a bailout. We're going to pay the deficit. That is the most cost-effective way. I've talked to a police chief in a county, very similar ones. He doesn't want his name out there because he did not talk to his judge. They started a county police force there. The starting cost was close to $10 million. They have 33 officers, so it's very similar to what we have here. <clears throat> Their average budget is $3.8 $4.2 million a year, depending on what they have to buy. Just from a numbers standpoint, this is the, the most cost-effective way. What, what, we're, what you guys are voting on right now is whether or not the people in this community have police protection. Nobody up here, even if you vote no, and, and, and Mr. Mitchell, I, I, I really appreciate everything he does. He, he stands his ground and he's independent. And I, I respect that greatly. However, he, he also knows that we have to have police protection. The way to do this, how are we, and, and each one of you all have asked constituents that said, don't you dare pay the sheriff. And again, I think it goes to a personal. Don't you dare pay the sheriff. It's not about the sheriff. It's about whether we have police protection. Right. We've all asked, what is plan B? You all know. You all have seen it. It is not going through the cities. That's more costly. One, Shepherdsville can't even get a quorum to tell us whether they could do it or not. We don't know. But even if they did, it still costs more. The state police is a non-issue. They do not have the people. It was in the paper today. They don't have enough people. We can't do that. So our choices are we either pay this with, and again, with the understanding that everything that was set on record in court keeps us at this level. We're not going to have to go through this based on what the sheriff said in fiscal court. So we're going to keep it at this level. If we don't do that, our only other option is to start a county force. If we do that, again, you're looking at doubling the budget. If we have to find it, we'll find it. But if we're worried about cutting everything else, and I think we're on the verge of working with economic development, working with PDA, working with all of these folks, without a tax increase, we're, we're going to start to see some things come through. We've got building, we've got growth, we've got those things. It's just the, the county attorney's office has brought in more back taxes and unpaid taxes in the last year than I've seen on record for the last couple. I know these things are starting to happen. I know this is this is there's a bad taste in everybody's mouth. And I'm sorry I'm going on and on. I've been working on this forever. I don't want to be evil, but this is the best deal on the table. That's what it is.
You have anything that does go back to the second time, 20 class. But there are, there are reasons why this happened. And, and I think part of this, some of this, and again, when we went up there, I asked point blank, will you all forgive this? Will you forgive a portion of this? They said, absolutely not. I said, some of the fault lies on the state. And it does. They didn't train it. it Kevin Moody and stuff. He had, now he figured it out. He figured it out. Going forward, I think the sheriff has, has figured this out. But again, his levels have to be where, where he says they have to be with the number that we put in his head. That's where he has to be, not that sheriff. The state is very clear. It, it, it's, it, we are not obligated to pay this. This report is not obligated to pay this. What we're saying is if we want to have law enforcement, it's either, it's either we start accounting for us, we're going to pay for it that way, we're going to pay twice as much, or we do this. My understanding is the reason we started this system in the first place was because it was more cost effective. That's all I'm saying. We take out all of this other stuff about it. And, and, and I understand, Mr. Radio, and some of the things that were said, and we've complained about those, and they've been said about me. Both sides. I get it. And it's ridiculous. And it's horrible. And it's got to stop. And I've even said it needs to be policies in place for social media and all of that. I'm taking all of that out of this. I'm going to have close to 80,000 citizens, <coughs> police protection, what's the most cost effective way to do And the other side, I'm, 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 I'll go off script here a little bit. It's a personal challenge. A lot of these deputies are my friends and they come in and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'm going to suffer for that. So. I'd just like to add real quick that we mentioned, and I think Mr. Griffith will agree, and Ms. French back there can also. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Why don't you say something about the state? Okay. Uh, was that we, and we've shown, we, again, our agency's open book. That's one of the reasons we went to the cameras and on the deputy and everything else. We are we are open to the public. They can come ask us any question. Not guests, come ask us. Uh, Mr. Griffith knows, and Ms. Ms. French knows that this isn't a result of overspending uh, or any, any, any extra things that Sheriff Greenville has spoken in the past. This is a result of the beginning of the time, not getting the information like he said. That first year there wasn't we didn't bill back some things and then we we spent it hundred percent considering that we didn't realize that the twenty five percent would be gone like it was, we usually receive that back. So that first year, but we made that up the second year. And that's one thing I want to point out is this wasn't an over budget issue. We were under budget. This was not an over budget issue the last two years. This was a the money that was budgeted did not come in. Which is a budget again, and we're not going to get to that, but uh, Sheriff Greenwell, like he said, is pretty budget is pretty about the support. Uh, and so when he spends that money, thinking that money's coming in, you don't wait for the end of the year. You know, you don't how can you fix that problem? And like they said, Sheriff One or Sheriff Two did not pay for Sheriff One's debt. So again, if the Sheriff Two is not responsible for it, and the support's not responsible for it, who's responsible for it? And there's nothing in the law that says that the sheriff himself personally is responsible for it, but that's where we've gotten today. And that's where Sheriff Greenwell's side is, that that's what it looks like everyone's saying is, or here is trying to say is that if he's personally responsible for that debt, and it wasn't over spending, it wasn't over budget. So that's what I'd like to make sure this court is aware of it. We didn't over budget. If you set a budget at your home, and you expect that amount of money to come in, and it turned out it doesn't come in, the other thing is, as we know, and that he's Judge Nose and Judge Nose, uh, when you call down there and they tell us, you're great, you're, you're better than most counties, you're right where you need to be. You always work with the rich. They told Merle Prince that numerous times. They told the judge that himself that numerous times. They told I believe that I want the treasure called an office. Anybody calls me that said you are within what you need to be. How do we fix that? And that's what it's come down to. And that's why Sheriff Greenwell did ask the extra five hundred thousand and two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's this where we need to be. This isn't a flat of spending, this isn't anything else. The only extra things we buy is out of drug forfeiture money from the drug task force is doing an amazing job. We don't buy anything, we can't. It took me five years to get a camera. We don't get what we need of it. So that's how it's not what's been. Well, thank you. Captain <coughs> Rock, uh, let's let Deputy Judge Padoff speak to the state situation because I think she can uh, put, shed more light on that as well. Deputy Judge? Yeah, but Captain uh, Rock is saying that it's been true a couple of years ago. It looks like on our end that things are not exactly like I called the state numerous times. All, every time I call, they're fine, they're good, that's, that's how it's that operating in red for four years, and it never made sense to me how you can operate in red for four years and then miraculously be fine. 